Today I'm going to be talking about risk management and sort of go over some of the basic strategies and sort of explain how it works. And I find risk management to be one of the most important things when it comes to trading, especially when it starts to become something that you consider doing seriously or maybe on the long term, you really, really need to know what risk management is. So today I will be going over what that is. But before I get into the video, I do just wanna say that make sure you do your own research before making a trade. And by learning risk management, that does not guarantee you success in trading you still do want to make sure that you are able to lose all the money that you are investing as trading is inherently risky and there is no guarantee that you will always make a winning trade. Anyways, let's get right into the video and I do just want to say that if there is anything you guys do not understand in this video, you can go ahead and leave a comment and I will try to get back to you as fast as possible. And if you find that I am going too fast and you need more explanation into a certain topic, Crypto Cred also has a very, very good video on risk management, although it is much longer, but it is still a very, very good video. So if you guys find that I'm going too fast for you, then make sure you guys check out that video, but I'm going to try to make it as easy to understand as possible. Anyways, let's get right into the video. So one of the most important things whenever it comes to making a trade is finding a point for stop loss. So stop loss is something that pretty much every single experienced trader uses because it is a guarantee at limiting your losses. So whenever you make a stop loss, you're saying that you are okay with making that loss because the amount of reward that you are going to end up getting is greater than the potential loss. So a stop loss is super important when it comes to risk management because it is the basis for your trade. And where should you be placing your stop losses? Stop losses are supposed to be the point at which your trade is no longer valid. So for example, in this situation right here, um, if gold is going down and breaking this support point, then obviously you might wanna be short on it because you're saying, okay, now that it is breaking this support, it's going to go down more. So by saying, it's going to break the support and go down more. If it goes back above the support, then you most likely want to exit that trade because your trade is no longer valid. You're saying now that it's back above the support, I'm not really sure what's gonna happen. My trade is no longer valid and I want to exit the position. So in that, I would find a position that you are comfortable with in putting your stop loss. So maybe give it a little bit of wiggle room uh, for the candle to move just above it and maybe go back down. So you can find a zone, for example, right there. And then you are able to place your stop loss in a zone that you find to be comfortable. So stop loss is one of the most important things when it comes to making trades. And I cannot say it enough. You should have a stop loss on every single trade, no matter what, whether it be long term or short term, because no matter what, there is always a point at which you are uncomfortable with losing a certain amount of money, especially when making day trades uh, or short term trades in general. So always make sure you place a stop loss. And I do want to say that if you are not placing a stop loss, then your trade is pretty much considered gambling. You are not trading, you are gambling because you are not limiting your losses to a certain amount and you are not making the trade favorable for you as it can go either way and you would just be up to your own speed and your own decision making as to if the trade would actually be good. So make sure you use stop loss. Now, the next thing you need when determining risk management is a target. Now, I do want to say that targets are a lot more uncertain as to the stop losses, as whenever you have a stop loss, it is a very, very clear point to where the trade is no longer valid. For example, if it breaks the support, and it goes down, then I think it's going to continue to go down. So if it goes above that support, then the trade is no longer valid and it will most likely not go down. So I put my stop loss there. But if I want to get a target, which is how much I think it will move in the direction that I'm guessing it will move in by, then it's a lot harder to predict how big the move will be. So for example, here, if I see that it did go down to this level down here, you can see that this is also a zone of support. 
It's around this zone where we have seen in the past uh, the coin has sort of stopped. So you can try to guess or assume certain spots where the coin might see support or resistance and might stop moving in your direction that you're predicting it will move in. So if you have something like this where it's just support and resistance points, then it can be a little bit harder to find. But if you do have something like a pennant or a specific flag movement where you have two specific lines that you know it's going to move in between. Uh, so for example, over here, if I was trading these two lines and I was saying, okay, it's going to go down from this line and it's going to go up from this line, then it would be very, very easy to find targets because you can say, okay, my target is going to be you know, just under this zone right here because I know that this is going to be the resistance. So you want to try to find the area that is most likely that your coin will move in. But as always, the, the expected target isn't always going to be exactly correct. Uh, so I recommend you sort of play around with targets and learn your best and your most comfortable targets to use when trading and how it reacts to different support and resistance points. So once you have a target or an area that you think the coin will move to and a stop loss or an area that you want to exit your position in, then you are finally ready to determine your risk and reward ratio of your trade. So this is one of the most important things when it comes to making a trade. And in this example, I'm actually going to give you a trade that I personally made on my live account. So here we are on gold as I have been showing and as I saw gold break this support I thought okay gold is most likely going to go down more within this period and so then what I did is I waited for gold to bounce off of this support point all the way over here so I said okay gold will most likely bounce off of this support before continuing to fall further after breaking this support so I waited for it to bounce off of this support and then as I saw it get closer to this resistance line or this previous support that it broke I wanted to short because I said okay it's most likely not going to go above this line it is going to fall so I had my trade, I wanted to short as close to this line up here as possible so I could limit my risk reward. So why do I want to get to as close to this line as possible? Well, my trade is no longer valid once it passes this line. So once it goes past this support or previous resistance point right here, then my trade is no longer valid. So the closer I get to it, the less I am risking in a potential loss. So the less I can lose because my trade is false. So if it goes past this line, then it will hit my stop loss and my trade will become no longer valid and I would have lost money. But the closer it gets to this line and the closer it gets to the point where my trade is no longer valid, the smaller the loss will be that I will make if the trade is no longer valid. So that's why I was waiting for it to get as close as possible to this support or resistance point before making the trade. So I ended up making the trade uh, relatively close to this line and I actually ended up getting in just around right here. So I opened a short right on this line with a target of around this zone down here. So I had my target set to around here and I entered right there with a stop loss just above the support line that it had broken where my trade would no longer be valid if it entered above that zone. So on TradingView, you have these very, very useful tools. This is the long and short position tool on TradingView. You can see right here, long and short position. So depending on if you're longing or shorting, you would choose one, uh, you know, depending on what position you are going to be making. So as you can see right here, I have a short position open. And this is a very, very easy way to determine your profit and loss and your risk reward ratio. So if we do drag these lines to the points that I had set, so my entry was right there. My stop loss was just above this line. So let's try to drag it as close as possible. And then my target was down here. So now you can see that my stop loss, which is this red line, is lined up with the stop on the short position on trading view. 
and then my entry is matched up with my entry line on TradingView, and my target is matched up with my target, then you are able to see here that the risk reward ratio of this trade was 4.8, and my profit and loss was 7.77. So the profit and loss doesn't really matter too much depending on what you're trading. So if you are just trading one for one without any leverage, then that is exactly what your profit uh, and loss would be. However, it can highly depend depending on leverage. So the main thing you want to focus on is the risk reward. So what this is telling you, this number 4.8, this is telling you that your risk, the amount that you are risking in this trade. So the amount that you would lose if you hit your stop loss set right here, the amount that you would lose at this stop loss is 4.8 times smaller than the amount that you would make if it hit your target. So basically what's that, what that's saying is you could lose this trade four times in a row and then make it on the fifth time. So you could lose five trades or four trades in a row and then make your last trade and you would still be profitable because your risk reward or the amount that you are risking compared to the amount that you are able to make if the trade does execute correctly is 4.8 times greater. So that is how risk reward is calculated. And that is something that you want to take into consideration for every single one of your trades that you are executing. It is very, very important that you do this for every single one of your trades, as not only does it force you to have a stop loss and a target, but then it forces you to see if the trade that you're making is actually profitable in the end and if the odds are actually for you. As if this number is below one, if you are risking the same amount that you are able to make if your trade does go through, then it is likely not worth it as you are just gambling your money and you it would likely not be favorable as you would only have like a 50% chance of actually making money on all of your trades. And obviously as a trader, you wanna have as many winning trades or as much profit as possible compared to your losses. So that is why you use risk reward. So obviously with risk reward, that can then later lead you into other trading statistics, such as the win percentage and the amount of profit that you are able to make. Uh, but all in all, you just want to make sure that your risk reward tries to stay as high as possible. You don't really want to make any bad trades, anything below like 1.5 or getting into the area of one is not really always the best idea as you always want to make sure that the amount of profit that you can make is is proportionally higher to the amount that you would lose within any current trade. And obviously, if the risk reward is lower, you do want to make sure that you are more sure of the trade. So for example, if my target was only up to here, then I would want to make sure that I know, you know, maybe more likely than not that it will hit this target rather than the stop loss. Uh, if not, I wouldn't make the trade because the risk reward isn't that high meaning that it is most likely not worth your time and you have a higher chance of losing money. So that's basically some basic ways that you can use it with trading statistics. And I would definitely recommend you guys do this for all trading, whether it be Forex, whether it be cryptocurrency, whether it be any trading at all, as this is something that every trader needs to do in order to become a more proficient and high level trader in the future as you do advance and make more trades with more money, because you definitely don't want to be losing money once you start getting into areas of money that you would definitely just not want to have, or at least would like not to lose. So before I end this video, I did just want to have a quick look at Bitcoin here. Uh, I just thought it was interesting that we are continuing this uptrend on Bitcoin. We still haven't broken it, which is something that is extremely interesting for me. As we keep this uptrend, I am still extremely bullish on Bitcoin. I do know a lot of people that have been talking about it, uh, specifically picking up Bitcoin if it does dip down back to the 6,000 level. So a lot of people are definitely looking at Bitcoin right now. And if it does go below this trend line, then I would be bearish for the future of it. However, for now, I do think that there is personally a higher chance that we do stay in the sideways market and then eventually make an upwards move, which would be great as we do come to the end of this year. 
But anyways, before you do make that trade, make sure that the risk reward is good and that you do have good risk management. Anyways, guys, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure you guys leave in the comment section down below if you have any questions about risk management or what you think about Bitcoin and where it's headed in these upcoming months. Anyways, guys, thank you guys so much for watching this video and see you guys in the next one.